voice, treaty, truth. This is what Indigenous Australians want. This is our aspiration. As the Uluru Statement from the Heart states, we seek constitutional reforms to empower our people to take a rightful place in our country. When we have power over our destiny, our children will flourish. They will walk in two worlds and their culture will be a gift to their country. I want to pay special tribute tonight to the three co-chairs, Pat Anderson, Noel Peason, and the wonderful Megan Davis, who is with us this evening. The Voice will deliver practical change that will lead to better outcomes in areas like health, education and housing. And of course it will fix that glaring omission in our nation's birth certificate to recognise the 60,000 plus years of uh, Aboriginal participation and occupation of this country. I believe it was one of the most significant speeches by a Prime Minister on Indigenous affairs since Kevin Rudd's apology to the Stolen Generations in 2008. In the red dirt of North East Arnhem Land, the Prime Minister proposed a simple question and possible amendments to the Constitution. The Prime Minister's Gama speech gave us hope. Hope for a better future, hope for a more reconciled Australia, and hope that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children will grow up with more opportunities and better outcomes in life. What comes next? Tomorrow, uh, and Megan will be there, in Canberra, a group of First Nations people will meet with the Prime Minister to discuss the road forward, with Senator Dodson and myself as co-chairs. The referendum working group will work together with government and guide the big questions that need to be considered in the coming months, including firstly the timing to, con to con conduct a successful referendum. So we might talk about a date tomorrow. Secondly, refining the proposed constitutional amendments and questions. And thirdly, informa information on the voice necessary for a, su a successful referendum. Its work will be enhanced by the establishment of a second group, the Referendum Enga Engagement Group, and I'm pleased to say that Paul House, who is here with us this evening, is going to be a part of the engagement group. It's an incredibly important job. It will provide advice on and assist with building community understanding awareness and support for the referendum. It will, it will provide advice on engagement with First Nations communities and most importantly, be advocates for the voice. The referendum engagement group will comprise of representatives from across the country, including land councils, local governments, community control service organisations and some very special individuals. These are the next steps. The plan on the road to the referendum. Getting First Nations representatives together to work closely in partnership with government on key issues relating to the referendum. Governments cannot lead this referendum. It has to come from the grassroots. It has to come from the people. And it has to come from people like you. It has to come from communities, because The Voice is a nation-building project. We will, we will need a united yes campaign that captures your attention and the imagination of the Australian people. The most urgent thing that business can do is make sure your employees understand what this is about. Uh, there are 240 people in this room, I'm told, or thereabouts, and I imagine you employ 
thousands and thousands of people. So the leadership from the top about the voice, uh, making it clear that it is not just about symbolism, it is actually also about very practical things that will um, mean that the decisions made in the parliament um, are decisions that will be the right decisions when it comes to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Focus on youth, help create and back up those that are working in that space. There are many wonderful people who are, but in some places they need infrastructure and they need ongoing costs to help people deliver, this, the, to deliver those services. I just start there because they are our future. We're working in this space for the future of all Australian youth to have a better relationship and a better country to live within and to believe that you can dream of anything and you're able to achieve it. And every kid's got to be given that opportunity. Mm. Who become the representatives of the voice, we've got a single platform to advocate on behalf of the First Nations. Language, culture, social programs, improved interaction with the authorities, power sharing. What a wonderful thing our nation would be giving back in response to the invitation that's been extended by the people from the Uluru Statement. It's an invitation. In my day, we wouldn't have invited anyone in. <laughs> Thankfully, there are more enlightened people that were part of the Uluru process who said, this is an invitation to the Australian public. It's not us, the politics, we're the catalysts in this process. We're, we are the people in the parliament that make things happen, or we hope to make things happen. We're the catalysts, we're the catalytic converters in the process. We need you and others to make it clear to those out there, and there's 20% or more of them, who have died in the wall against this process. Who are saying, no, 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 no. Why? We will rectify one of the greatest injustices that our nation continues to live with under shame. You know? I was a schoolboy when the 67 referendum was passed. Prior to that, I was a non-citizen of this nation. Why, are we, why do I, am I optimistic? Because I believe the Australian people want to see the change. They want to fix up what they know and have been told by the High Court, have been told by numerous inquiries, have been told by your own inner belief that we haven't got it right yet with the First Nations and we won't until we give them a real say in the Parliament of Australia. Put to you the argument about why we think a referendum should come first. Um, and some of you will know this, that treaty making is incredibly complex, it is long, and uh, contemporary treaty making, which is what we would have here, we're looking at 10, 12, 15 years. Patrick and I probably won't be in the parliament. So. <laughs> What you're going to make? I just hang around right? and make sure it happens. <laughs> so the terms of senators are longer, of course. So. <laughs> oh, look, the you, you all know who you have to treat with when you want a contract. Yeah, you're going to know that the party's reputable, it's honourable, it's got credentials, it's got things to back itself up with. Oh, well, a voice in the constitution gives you some comfort around that. You're dealing with right people for the right entity. And it'll be nutted out in due course, the legislation around that and the election process and the representative basis and the powers, functions, all of that comes in legislation. And that'll be done in consultation and negotiation with First Nations.